It is big enough. Well, guess what that is? Why? Come in here, I'll show you. They say every day is a good day for fishing. Now, every day's fishing starts in one of two places, your local tackle world store and or your local bakery. You've got to get bait and all the bits and pieces, and of course, you need to be fed. Now, Jet, I'll have a skinny latte with one sugar, a steak and mushroom pie, and a donut, but don't tell Mum, OK? OK. Off you go. You go order that for me. How good is this? Now, over 50,000 fans on my Facebook page, I Fish with Tackle World. And the number one thing you ask for is please go and do some bread and butter fishing. Simple, basic fishing that we can all go and do. So today is about doing the basics. I'm going to take you through every little step. Jet's going to help me. There's going to be no big fish, but there's going to be plenty of small ones. And hopefully I can show you the sort of thing you can go and do on your day off. Now, for that pie. After you, madam. What about Dad? There are a couple of more things we need. Okay. A skinny latte, a pie, but we're not telling Mum, and I need a loaf of bread. More about that later. That one's for the fish. And there we are. Very important to note, we've got a falling tide today. And it is not the perfect time to be fishing because we've got a falling tide, but it was the best time to take Jed out because he's obviously nice and bubbly in the middle of the day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up. I can put my gear here. I know the waves aren't going to come and get it because the wind is supposed to abate. And I've actually picked this location because of that beautiful patch of weed out there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fantastic patch of weed. And you see I haven't got my traditional white spotters on. I've got these black ones, they've got a beautiful light lens. And what they do, they actually brighten the day up and I can see every patch of weed here. And my theory is if I get some burly going, I will actually attract the fish away from the weed, out to the sand patches where I can then put a bait and present it just beautifully in front of them. So when you're going down the beach, don't just stop anywhere. There's a bit of a gutter here, nice bits of structure for the fish to hide on. And I reckon if we burly, it might take half an hour, but eventually I'll catch something and that will keep him very, very happy. Okay, so no point in going down your local beach and taking a Stella, because the average person isn't going to go fishing with a Stella worth $1,000. So what I did, went to Tackle World Cram yesterday and I got these beautiful Shimano outfits. Now this is the cheapest Shimano front drag reel that they make. It's a little FX, C2500 FB, aluminium spool. Even though it's the cheapest front drag they make, it's still a beautiful little reel. And I've matched up with a Shimano Torx 7 foot nibble tip, solid glass. So a really cost effective outfit that any budget can afford. But still very important, don't drop them in the sand. Sand will kill any fishing reel, regardless of what it's worth. So, I've got this little rod holder out of the side pocket of the boat, and that just sits there beautifully. So when I'm not holding the rod in my hand, my gear isn't getting ruined, because nothing worse than taking your gear down the beach, and it only gets one use. So, look after your gear, and even cost-effective tackle could still catch plenty of fish. Today's fishing and boating tip is brought to you by boatsales.com.au. 
Isn't this McKay aluminium trailer just a piece of engineering excellence? I can't believe how beautiful it is, but I suppose as a man, you get very excited by big pieces of metal and things like that. I've just towed this trailer with my little boat on it, 920 kilometres to St George's Basin, and I've got to say, it towed like a dream. In fact, a little bit dangerous at times, I actually forgot the boat was behind the car because it tows so well. I've got to keep looking in the rear vision mirror thinking, ah, I am towing. And the reason it tows so well, well there's actually a couple. One, the trailer is extremely low. It gets the weight very low to the ground, helping the centre of gravity. It's also as wide as possible, and that width helps it stay nice and balanced. The other great thing about it is, it's aluminium. Now aluminium trailers, they are the way of the future because they're just as strong as steel, but they're a lot lighter, so you're not having to tow all that weight everywhere you go. And the biggest bonus of that, aluminium doesn't corrode. So next time you're looking at buying a boat trailer, have a good think about it and consider aluminium. It's the way of the future for all the reasons I've just said. And when people buy beautiful boats, they don't often think about what's going to sit under them. They spend all the research and time getting the hull right and the engine, and they go, oh, trailer, whatever. Well, let me just say, the trailer is one of the most important things because it separates your boat from the bitumen, and that is a big ouch. So when you're looking for a trailer, consider aluminium like this McKay. It's 11 out of 10. It'll save you heaps of dollars in towing, and it'll make sure your boat is always in tip-top shape. This fishing and boating tip was brought to you by boatsales.com.au. Now, even though the coffee was amazing and the pie was pretty good too, this is the real reason I went to the bakery this morning. This is some of mm, the best bread you'll ever eat. But it isn't for me, it's for the fish today. And our target species is garfish. It's really important to target the fish that are there and only try and catch those fish. If you try and do too many things, you may catch nothing. Now, bread is one of the best burlies known to man. So I break this bread up and I just fill my little burly pot there with bread. Now, I don't actually want the fish to eat the bread. All the bread really is, is like a sponge, and it's going to hold my tuna roll. So I put that in there, I make a little well in the middle, and I get my tuna roll. This is what will bring every fish within 500 metres right to this spot. So I pour that in. Oh, I love that smell. The lid goes on. And I'll put a little stake down there in the sand. So this will just wash around and let the fish know that we're here and we're ready for them. What are we catching? We'll have to try and catch a fish. Now come here. I've seen some fish in the water. You hold the rod. Yeah. Hold the rod and just wait. Can you, can you see the float? It's just out there, the float. So what you got to do when the float goes under, that's when you got to wind, OK? Oh, there it is. Oh, that, it's going out. Wind slowly. Wind. Wind. What happened? It went under the water. Wind. Wind. Good boy. Keep going. Keep going. Can you feel anything? Yeah. What can you feel? Yeah. Oh, look at your fish. Look. Can you see that? Yeah. Keep winding. Now, Jenny. Look at this. That's only a tiny one as big as Jed, isn't it? Dad? Yeah? Do you want to, can we keep him? Oh, no, he's a bit little. He might want to go and see his mummy, hey? Why? Oh, because I think he's going to miss his mummy. He's going to be sad. Now, that is a very, very tiny Arapus trutter, Australian salmon. And being Port Phillip Bay, these fish are often referred to as bay trout. And when they're in this immature size, he's just a baby jetty like you, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he's a little boy like you. They'll be here literally by the thousand. And this may be an indication, I'll throw him back, as to why the gars haven't turned up yet. Because if there's small salmon, there's often bigger salmon, and they love eating garfish. High five, man. Well done. Good work. I just saw a little bit of disturbance in the water there. Oh, there we go. Look at that. And a small yellow eye mullet. Now, We've been catching plenty of these. We haven't shown you them all, of course. Oh, there he goes. I'll pick him up. Yep, come here, mate. Up, up, up. I was going to pick him up and show you, but now I won't. Jet actually has a little mullet. He's playing with that in the bucket. And I reckon that's half the fun of taking kids down the beach. 
the fact they get to see a fish. Now, if you like birds, if you look up a gum tree, you might see a rosella. But if you love fish, the only way to actually see them and touch them and learn about them is to take them out of the water and have a look. So there's no size limit on yellow eye mullet in Victoria. Jet's playing with the mullet. I'm starting to see a bit of activity here. I actually think I saw a few gars break the surface. They're the target fish. Oh, Jet's yelling out. I hope the mullet didn't bite him. Because we're working on the KISS principle today, keep it simple, stupid, that's what they always taught me at school. This is a quite simple rig. It looks complex, but it ain't that hard. Pencil or quill float, depends where you grew up. The line goes through that little stopper on the top there and then runs through the bottom, so that is now attached. Underneath that, I simply add split shot. And those split shot sinkers are actually pushed down onto the line. A very small swivel in the middle there, because on the end, is four pound fluorocarbon. I think fluorocarbon makes a massive difference, particularly when you're fishing in shallow clear water like we are today. Four pound, couple more split shot, and on the end, my little eagle claw long shank hook. So, that takes the twist out. The sinkers make sure that when I cast, the float sits up beautifully, and when the float goes under, you've caught yourself a fish. Oh, nice, nice and gentle, Jet, nice and gentle. Slowly bring him in. Good boy, nice and gentle. This is just sensational. Oh, look at the size of it. Oh, look, it's a big mullet. Bring it in. Keep winding. Jenny! <laughs> look at that. It's big enough to keep. <laughs> Do you think my boy likes keeping fish? Come around here. Now, you know, Jetty, we can't keep them all, can we? Why? Well, because we have to let them go. Because see this mullet? Yeah. That's a good yellow-eyed mullet, by the way. This yeah. mullet, we need to let it go so it can have some more babies and there'll be lots of fish in the sea for next time. Okay. So we let him go? Ash. Good boy. How good is that? Yellow eyed mullet. That's a beautiful fish. And uh, again, no legal size limit for mullet in Victoria. Check your own state regulations. But the reason for that is fisheries want kids to be able to take a fish home and show their mum. Because you didn't really do it if you haven't shown your mum. And the other thing, a lot of guys use these fish for live bait. Well done, Jet. Are you let this one go? So we're going to have some babies for next time. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're going to wet a line. Because every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift. Hook up with a local and visit one of the many Tackle World stores right across Australia. Every store is owned and operated by experts who know exactly what bait and tackle you need to catch your target species because they all fish. Drop into a Tackle World store where every day's a good day for fishing. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they go fishing is they don't target a species. You've got to pick a fish and then do everything you can to try and catch that fish. So today's target species, garfish. I've got the hook I need for gars, the rig, I'm in a perfect garfish location, and of course, I need the best garfish bait. The best garfish bait, silverfish. Not the sort you might find in the wardrobe at home. These little fish come from Asia, I believe, and gars just love them. And all I do is get my silverfish and just slide it up my long shank hook and work it on all the way so that very little hook is actually exposed till I get down towards the end. I want that to sit nice and proud at that point. And there is my perfect little bit of silverfish bait. The gar will come up, he'll just get so excited because he's fired up by the burly. He'll leak that in one go, and then we've got a beautiful little feed. I've got one. Do you want to wind him in or do you want me to? Okay, just nice and slow. Nice and slow. Are you having fun with your mullet in the box, in the bucket? Yeah, it's in the mullet. Yeah, oh, what's this one? Oh, guess what this one is? What? This is our target fish. You tell me what it is when you see it. Here it comes. You tell me what it is. A target fish. A target fish. That's the voice. Stop whining. Stop whining. What's this one called? A target fish. It is our target fish, but it's a garfish, isn't it? A garfish. Isn't that beautiful? 
Well, that is our target species, and in Victoria, even into South Australia, Western Australia, and some parts of New South Wales. In fact, I've even seen gars in Darwin. Oh, don't put my reel in the sand, mate. Thanks, buddy. Jet's back to the mullet. Yay! That is a garfish, and that a is... Garfish! We caught a garfish! The boy's a bit excited. That is one of the best friends of land-based anglers because they're pretty easy to catch generally. They're actually very, very sweet, and they also make fantastic baits for many other species. The great thing about float fishing is you can see the float go under and if it stays under you know the fish has probably hooked itself. So my float's disappeared, I'm losing a bit of line, I'm tipping there's a fish on there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get Jet to come over, I'm going to put the rod in his hand, flick the bale and I'm going to let him think he hooked the fish because I reckon that'll be more exciting for him and it'll make him want to come back time and time again. Hey Jet, can you come and hold this for me please buddy? What? Come and hold this for me. I've got to, I've got to just get something out of my box. What? Can you hold that for Daddy? Yeah. I just got to get something out of my box. There you go. Just hold it for me. There you go, mate. Where did I caught a fish? You did not. Look and at the bent. Oh, it's bent, is it? Well, you better keep whining here. This bit butt's a bit long for you. Put it, hold it there and whine. That's it. Did you really get one? Yeah. Can you feel him? Yeah. I reckon you might have. What was your secret in catching one? What did you do? I don't know. I just wind up like this. Oh, you're doing a great job. Oh, there is a bend in your rod, mate. What do you think of my feet? I don't know. Maybe a garfish. Maybe a garfish. Good boy. There's a good bend in that rod. Oh, wow. Keep winding, mate. Keep winding. Can you see him? Oh, yeah. It was a big Oh, what do you think it is? It's a big one. What is it? It is big enough. Well, guess what that is? What? Come in here, I'll show you. Come in here. That's an Australian salmon. Remember we caught little salmon before yeah. on the beach? Yeah. That is a beautiful fish. How good is that? The float went under. Long shank hooky scoffed it. And Jetty, that's the biggest fish of the day, mate. Yeah. Well done, buddy. High five. Hey. How about you go get your bucket? Because legal size is 21 centimetres, Victoria. I can tell you that's 21 centimetres. So. He's big enough, he's a keeper. He's the biggest fish I caught all day. That's it. Beautiful as the best trotter. Dad, do you think we can keep him at our house and not eat him? Um, I don't think we can keep him. Where are we going to put him? Uh, maybe we can put him in the creek. Or what about in the house? What about we put him in our house? What about we put him... Um, what about we put him, what about we put him inside near the kitchen? Perfect. I'm just moving the float very slowly and sometimes that'll entice him to bite. Slow, slow, and I can actually feel the bite and got him. How cool is that? Just by winding slowly, I've obviously got a few gars out there and this one's come up and thought that little silverfish ain't getting away. And look at that. Just a small one. He's actually got a broken beak, that guy there. Look at that, his beak would normally be quite a bit longer, so he might have had a bit of a session there with something that wanted to eat him. But pretty little fish, and I say little, they are. Very unique, though. If you know fish, you'll know that fish have a dorsal fin, as in latissimus dorsi, the muscle on the back there. And the garfish is very unique in that its dorsal fin is right down there, above its anal fin. And I can't think of too many other species that share that interesting bit of trivia. Now that you've fallen asleep, I'll put that garfish back. I'm only joking. Isn't that cool? What a pretty fish. If you want the latest fishing info, head to ifishtv.com.au or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash ifishtv. For the latest clips, head to youtube.com forward slash ifishtv and follow us daily on Facebook at ifish with Tackle World. Remember, subscribe to ifishtv.com.au and I'll send you an email every week with what's coming up on the show. See the bend in Daddy's rod? Yeah. And it's actually going down the beach, so we're going to follow it, guys. There is nothing behind you, just in case you need to know. Oh, Jenny! Did you just look at this? Oh, this is actually taking line. Come on, mate. Yes! Look Lapa. at him. Look at him, Jenny. Oh, he's jumping again now. I've only got three-pound fluorocarbon leader here, so I'm just going to... Oh! 
So you jump jack? Yeah! Come on, mate. Very light gear intended for garfish. And this beautiful salmon, which I'm going to try and beach. Come here, mate. Just use the waves. Jenny! Is it bigger? What do you think, mate? It's bigger. It's bigger. Look at that for a beautiful salmon. Look at that. Yeah. You'd be happy to catch that salmon. It's an Australian salmon, Arab Australia, just about anywhere, and if you're in a boat. But to be able to come down here and use the basics of fishing, anybody could do what I've done today. Literally, it's cost a pie, a coffee, a little bit of burly, some silverfish, and you can come and enjoy one of the greatest pastimes in the history of the world, fishing. That is a magnificent salmon. I'm very, very proud, I'm very excited, and I hope today you've picked something up that's going to help you do this in the future with your family. Chet, what do you reckon about fishing off the beach? Uh, it's cool. It's cool. And if kids think it's cool, it's all right. So, do yourself a favour. If you get a chance, go to iFish with Tackle World, my Facebook page. There's over 50,000 people on there. Shoot me your ideas, because like today, I'd be more than happy to go and try them out for you. It's just the kind of guy I am. What a beautiful fish. Off you go, mate. Look at that.